Hey, what's up everybody? It's the Hyphenate here. And today I'm gonna show you guys how to use your Sony a7S III camera as an external video source, such as a webcam for live streaming or recording into your computer. Now, this is gonna allow you to use it for gaming, for video conference calls, etc. You're gonna take the HDMI output from your camera into a video capture card that's gonna connect via USB into your computer and allow you to use that a7S III as an external video source. Now this will work on Mac or PC, Aside from a computer, you're gonna need a video capture card that takes HDMI in and then connects via USB to your computer. Now, there are many different video capture cards out there and they all have different limitations when it comes to frame rate or resolution. My personal recommendation is the Elgato CamLink 4K. Now, that capture card can go to 4K resolution only up to 30 frames per second. Now, I never live stream with 4K. I only live stream in 1080p. Now the cam link can do 1080p up to 60 frames per second. When I do gaming, I use 1080p 60 frames per second. When I live stream podcasts or things that are a little bit more cinematic, then I actually use 24 frames per second. Now, aside from a video capture card, you're also gonna need some type of live streaming or recording software for your computer. Now, my personal recommendation is OBS Studio. It's free, awesome, and easy to use. In this video, I'm gonna show you step-by-step -step on the settings needed for the a7S III to work as a webcam. And I'm also gonna show you step-by-step -step on how to set it up in OBS Studio. Now, if you wanna know how to use the HDMI output on the Sony a7S III for external recording, that's a whole other process, and I do have a video tutorial on this channel. The link for that video is in the description below. So now let's go to the settings of the Sony a7S III. So on your Sony a7S III, press the menu button, go down to the bottom tab, which is setup, then go to the 11th page of that setup tab, and that's external output. Click right on there. And now we have four different options. We have HDMI resolution, HDMI output settings, HDMI info display, and control for HDMI. The top one, HDMI resolution, only relates to stills and playback. So don't worry about that one. The only ones that really matter are the following two, HDMI output settings and HDMI info display. HDMI info display, if you have that on, will show you all the actual settings on the camera. So shutter speed, frame rate, exposure, etc. And all of that will actually show on the HDMI feed. So you'll see what the lens sees, but you'll also see that other information. That is what you don't want when using this as a webcam. So you wanna make sure that that stays off. Now let's go up to HDMI output settings. Now here you're gonna see on the top, it says record media during HDMI output. If you have that on, that allows you to record to your memory cards on your camera while also outputting the HDMI feed. Now this is useful if you want to have the recording backed up on your camera aside from it going into your computer. If it's something that's very important like a podcast or an interview or anything like that, then I highly recommend keeping that on. If it's not, then you can turn it off. Now, when you turn it off, you will get more options available. These grayed out options, which I'll touch on in a bit, will be available only when that is set to off. But for now, let's focus on it being on. When it's on, your bit rate and frame rate will match whatever your camera settings are set to be. So if you're filming at, let's say, 24 frames per second at 10 bit, then that's gonna be output via HDMI. Your resolution, however, can be adjusted by clicking on output resolution. And here you can manually choose whatever you want it to be outputting. Or if you click on auto, it'll automatically go to whatever the highest possible quality is for your capture card. So if I set it to auto, it's actually gonna go to 4K 30 frames per second on the cam link. Now, because I only live stream in 1080p, I'm gonna select that. Now again, by having the record media during HDMI output on whatever your frame rate is on your camera's settings, it's going to match that on your HDMI output. So if I'm shooting in 24 frames per second, I'm gonna wanna make sure that the input source on my capture device, like my computer, is also set to 24 frames per second. Now, if you wanna manually select your frame rate on the HDMI output, then you're gonna need to make sure that you have record media during HDMI output to off. And then you'll see it says, cannot record movies to a recording media even if not connected to an external recorder. So even if you do not have an external recorder connected, you will not be able to record to the internal memory cards. Now, once that's off, output resolution is not gonna be available. That's going to match the resolution that you have selected in your camera. So if you had your camera at 4K, even if you wanna output via 1080p, it will not allow you to. 
you'll have to change your camera settings to be 1080p if you wanted to output 1080p. But now you have this option available, 4K output setting, HDMI only. Here you can click on this, and now here you can choose the frame rate. So you can choose 60 frames, 30 frames, or 24 frames per second, even if the camera was set at a different frame rate. Now for using it as a webcam, I don't recommend having record media during HDMI output off. I recommend having that on. And for whatever frame rate you want output via HDMI, then go to menu, and then go to the first tab, which is named shooting, and then go to image quality, and then movie settings. And then here you can choose your frame rate. Now again, the frame rate is gonna match whatever you have set in your video settings. So now we're ready to connect it to the computer and into a software to use it for live streaming or recording. Again, I'm gonna use OBS Studio. My Sony a7S camera internally is set for 24 frames per second in 4K, but in the HDMI output settings, I have it set to be 1080p output only. HDMI is connected to my video capture card, which for me is the Camlink 4K, and that's connected via USB into my computer. Now we're gonna go ahead and launch OBS Studio and I'm gonna show you step-by-step step how to use it as a webcam in here. So here we are in OBS Studio and I have a brand new blank profile and scene collection. I've entitled them A7S III. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to sources and we're gonna click on the plus sign. Then from there, we're gonna click on video capture device. And then here, call it whatever you wanna call it. I'm gonna call mine A7S III. Press okay. And then here you're gonna have a drop-down menu of different things that you can use your integrated camera, OBS virtual camera, et cetera, et cetera. Ignore all that stuff and just choose your video capture device. Mine is called Camlink 4K. I'm gonna select that. And when I do, it's going to show a preview of what the A7S III is showing. I'm gonna press OK. And here we go. Currently, I have my OBS Studio set up to be in 1080p. And because I have a 1080p input coming in from the A7S III, it's automatically fit to the perfect size. Now, if you had a different size OBS Studio scene, let's say you had 4K resolution, and then you had a 1080p input with the A7S III, then this screen would actually be a quarter of the size. Inversely, if you have a 1080p scene in OBS Studio, but your HDMI input is coming in in 4K, then your screen would actually be way bigger, and you would only see a quarter of the actual feed from the A7S III. Let me show you really quick how on any type of way that you have it set up, if you want the HDMI input to take up the full screen, if it doesn't already, let's say for example here it's smaller, you can right click on that layer and then you can go to transform and you can put fit to screen. So whether it's bigger or whether it's smaller, you can make it fit your scene. So here we have the A7S III. It's on my desk right now and filming this little Star Wars Funko Pop. And here we're gonna go to video. Here you can see the base canvas resolution and you can also see the output. Now, if you wanna output in 1080p, then you're gonna to have to change that to 1080p, 1920 by 1080. Then here you can see the frame rate. Now, again, this is very important. You wanna make sure that your OBS Studio frame rate is matching the frame rate output from your camera. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the frame rate that I have set up on my camera currently is 24 frames per second. So we're gonna to go to 24 NTSC. If you have your frame rate set differently in OBS Studio and it's not matching your camera, it's not gonna look very natural. So make sure that you know what's in your camera and you match that here. Now under audio, you don't have to worry about that. The default's fine. Output, here you can choose your recording quality. Now when I use OBS Studio, if I'm recording to OBS Studio, not live streaming, then I change that to MP4 and I usually use recording quality at high quality medium file size. Now, this is not for live streaming, this is if you wanna record internally. So let's say you're doing some type of gaming capture and you want to have your camera in here recording as well, then this is what you would use. Now, I'm not gonna go full blown detail into gaming capture. I do have other videos on this channel that focus on using OBS Studio for gaming, for podcasting, etc. If you wanna watch any of those videos, I do have a playlist of OBS Studio and live streaming tutorials on the description of this video. Now, right above recording is streaming. Here you can choose the actual video bit rate. Now, if you're going in 1080p, you're gonna wanna be more at about 4,500 kilobits per second. Audio bit rate, 160 is fine. I usually go like to 192. Click apply. Now, when it comes to live streaming, 
you're going to use stream and here you can actually choose a service to connect to whether it's youtube facebook twitch etc now i do have another tutorial on this channel that shows you how to live stream simultaneously to facebook twitch and youtube all for free that video is included in that obs studio live streaming playlist that i mentioned earlier now when you have your a7s3 connected with a video capture card the hdmi will transmit both the video and the audio so whatever microphone that you have connected to your a7s3 will also be picked up here you can see under audio mixer you see the levels moving that is my voice coming from the camera so if you want high quality audio with your a7s3 then i highly recommend having an external microphone connected to your camera i personally use a wireless lavalier system and that connects to the mic jack on my camera so when i live stream i have the video and audio synced properly now if you use a separate audio source like let's say you use a mixer or a usb microphone and you have the mic and the video coming in from separate sources. The A7S III is carrying your video source, and then you have an external audio source coming into your computer. You will most likely come across some desyncing issues. Now, I do have a tutorial on this channel also that shows you how to fix that, also included in the playlist. So there you guys have it. That's how you use the Sony A7S III as a webcam, as an external video source into your computer for live streaming, gaming, recording, etc. Again, if you are interested in specifically podcasting, gaming, multicams, et cetera, I do have many tutorials on this channel that show you step-by-step -step how to do all of that. If you guys are interested in getting the Sony a7S III or any of the gear that I use, I do have links in the description where you can purchase them from either b Photo or Amazon. It doesn't change the price that you get it at, but it does help this channel. Please make sure to drop a like on this video, drop a comment below if you have any questions, and please make sure to subscribe. I have a lot more videos coming soon. I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.